back in, in the turn of the century, Einstein came up with his general theory of relativity, which is the theory of gravity that we're working with right now. But there are reasons to believe that Einstein's theory might not be the full story. Um, and in particular, one of, these, one of the big questions in cosmology right now is this question of what is dark energy? And dark energy shows itself that the universe is expanding. This is something that we've known since 1930 with Edwin Hubble. Um, but that expansion is actually accelerating in its rate. Observationally, it's established. This is definitely happening. But we don't have any theoretical models that explain why it's happening. And one of the possibilities is that our understanding of gravity is incomplete. And that, that this is telling us that there is some new aspects to gravity that we have yet to explain theoretically. And so another aspect of my, my research in gravity is trying to come up with ways of changing Einstein's theory of general relativity to explain this accelerated expansion of the universe. So we've already tried this, this idea that Einstein's theory is right, and we're going to fill the universe with some unknown material called dark energy. But we have to also try this other possibility that Einstein was wrong, and that we're just seeing evidence of, of the breakdown of general relativity. But we don't really have many uh, very precise probes in order to understand the fundamental nature of gravity. So uh, one of the things that I'm very interested in my research is to come up with new ways of testing gravity. Um, and one of, the, one of those ways, for instance, is in, in the solar system. We have all these planets orbiting the sun. And around the Earth, we have a lot of satellites that are orbiting the Earth. And the, uh, the, the laws of gravity dictate how, those, how the planets and also the, the satellites that are orbiting the Earth, how they move. And so we have recently, we've been getting very, very precise uh, information on how the planets and, and satellites move. And this gives us new ways of testing gravity. So it's, it's been observationally proven that the universe is accelerating in, a, in its expansion for 10 years. The, so that's one reason, and we have no explanation. So that's one reason why we look at modified theories of gravity. Another reason is, is the fact that Einstein's theory of general relativity cannot be included in a consistent uh, quantum theory of, of everything. So we can, we can have a quantum theory for electromagnetism, so the other three fundamental forces, electromagnetism, the weak force, and the strong nuclear force. Those three forces can be combined in a quantum theory. Gravity. Just like gravity is the weakest force, it's also left out of this, this pairing. So um, that's one of the other reasons people pursue looking at modified theories of gravity. The way that the LIGO experiment hopes to detect gravitational waves is to use something called an interferometer. So an interferometer is, is a fairly simple. Uh, they ha it has two different arms, two different sides, so it looks like an L. And you bounce laser light off of the two different sides. So you bounce laser light off, the, off of these two different sides of this L. They're monitoring the length of each side of this L very precisely. They can measure how long it is again, uh, along each side. And the gravitational wave, when it passes, causes one side to shrink a little bit and the other side to get a little bit longer. And so this is how they, they detect gravitational waves, uh, or they hope to detect gravitational waves with this technology. The way it's distinguished, so electromagnetic radiation, which is all the other waves that we, dete that we detect right now is electromagnetic, which means you can, you can think of it as uh, oscillations in an electric field, and it moves at the speed of light. This is what we see just with the light that's reaching your eyes right now. Um, gravitational waves, on the other hand, are essentially ripples in space-time. So essentially, if you have two objects that are orbiting each other, they're moving around, and they're sending out ripples in space-time, almost like when you drop a pebble into a lake. 
So the effect of those ripples is very distinct when it comes to gravitational waves. So when I was growing up, both of my parents are, are very uh, creative. And so it was quite a surprise to them when they realized that I was going to be a scientist. And uh, the main inspiration for that was my grandmother, who was a biology high school teacher. And uh, she, she would come over often and, and bring with her the science section of the New York Times. She and would you know, show me interesting articles and she would quiz me uh, give me a little prize if I, if I got the answers right, like a dollar or something like that. I have a great memory of going out to dinner with her, and uh, she loved lobster. But she wouldn't just eat the lobster, she would dissect it in front of me and show me all the ganglia and describe the chitin uh, that the, the shell of the lobster is made out of. So even though she tried very hard to get a biologist, uh, in the end, uh, I read a, a book by Richard Feynman. Uh, Surely you're joking, Mr. Feynman, I read that book. And, uh, and it just, it, it showed to me, well, first of all, Feynman is an amazing character. Uh, and, and his life was, was lived in a very vibrant way. So there's no, I mean, that captured my imagination uh, immediately. But I think I started to realize the kind of questions that a theoretical physicist attempts to answer. And the, the constant learning that someone who pursues this you know, every day you walk in to your office and you have a problem that you haven't solved the day before. And you come in and you make some progress on that. But every time you make a little progress, a new question comes up. And it's a really awesome feeling to know that every time that you wake up and walk in, you're going to learn something new today. You're going to understand something a little bit better. And I think Richard Feynman, for me, explained this in a way that really felt like it was natural that this is how, you know, this is a great way to, to use your time to, to work. And so that was really what, what got me. I realized this is it. I need to do that. And that was, I mean, absurdly young. <laughs> I must have been 10 years old or something like that. And I haven't really looked back since. One thing about studying gravity and, and general relativity is that it's very hard when you first sit down and you have a problem in general relativity. It's very hard for the most part to imagine what's going on. The predictions, with the, the dynamics of general relativity are so far removed from our day-to-day -day experience that you have to really look at the equations, understand what the equations are telling you. So I will have many days where I will, I will be studying the solutions to an equation or trying to solve some problem in general relativity. And I will just keep on working at it, keep on working at it during the day. Maybe I don't get a solution that day, but I go home and I'm still thinking about it. And all of a sudden, something will click in my head and the situation will seem a lot clearer and I will start to see what's happening. It really is a very interesting experience. And sometimes it will happen that I will be dreaming about it and I'll wake up in the middle of the night with the solution, I'll say, oh, that other equation is telling me this, and that makes sense given so on and so forth. You know, it, it really becomes part of how you think. I mean, I have times where I, I, I'm working on a problem, and I walk around, and all of a sudden, situations seem like integrals for some reason. I don't quite know how that works. <laughs> but I'll be like, yeah, this is like that, in and I'll stop myself. And, no, that integral is on a piece of paper <laughs> back in your office.